only camera, <laughs> which has a red dot on it now, so that's encouraging. We should all have straws. <laughs> all of us should look for it. No, actually, we should, because so, those straws are like 15 cents a piece. <laughs> what the hell is the matter with you? It's not the Opie and Anthony show. Sorry. <laughs> I think the painkillers are hitting. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the Yugi D and Jinx show. I am Brian. And I'm Julie. Hey Julie, why don't you tell us who our guests are today and where we're recording from? Yeah, well we're record recording. Recording, we're doing these live actually. Yeah, we're actually, we're trying again. We're hopefully the audio will be uh, working perfectly this time, but we're re recording uh, down in Georgetown at the Palace Theater and Art Bar, uh, which is open I think six or seven days a week. Uh, they have regular shows, much like ours, and we will be here, this will be our new home, every first Tuesday of the month. So thank you, uh, Palace, and um, thank you. We don't you. know what the bartender's name is. <laughs> we forgot. <laughs> What's your don't name? Don't worry about it. Oh, uh, Nemo. 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 Nemo, yes. Thank you, Nemo. Yes. Yeah, we do need to know. We found him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, we'd like to thank our, uh, our wonderful sponsor, The Stranger Magazine. Uh, and tonight, we have two guests, uh, both uh, Seattle, some of Seattle's bests in, in both the art and music world. We have Nick Gucker over here on my left. And then over on the right here, we have Blaine Cook. Welcome, guys. Thank you, yeah, family. Welcome, Thank you. guys. <clears throat> Happy Tuesday. Yes. Happy Tuesday. Woo Happy Tuesday. We made it through Snowpocalypse. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, if you don't know, if you haven't heard, it's snowing in Seattle, or it did snow in Seattle. Yeah, we're shocked. And the streets are completely crazy, and nobody knows how to drive in Seattle in the snow. Anyway. So it's a horror show out there. Yeah. So you guys made it down. Mm -hmm. So happy you made it down one piece. Um, and I want to just start. I caught an Uber. I tipped the guy $5. Oh, oh so I did too. Know. You guys did too? Yes. I drove. I'm the crazy lady. That yes, drove. exactly. Yeah, I did too. You drove too? You're yeah. the crazy lady that drove too? I drove on the first day that it snowed. Because oh, I'm on. a delivery driver, and so it's like, oh, so oh, oh, that's I have to your go job. to the airport? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> I, I had a couple of stiffies before I came down, so it wasn't really. <laughs> it's, my, it's my best interest, you know that. Right. Okay. <laughs> good idea. Ubers. That's a good plan. Yeah. Well, I want to just say briefly, uh, we, we invited Nick. Nick, um, we was also known as Nick the Hat. Um, let, if you could let our our um, esteemed audience know what you do. I know. I mean, we've introduced you as a as a what we would call a horror artist. Um, but if you could elaborate, love to hear a little more. Uh, yeah, that is indeed what I do, illustration, painting. Um, I do book covers, illustrations for short stories. I've done a local album, a band album cover called, the band's called Claw. Claw. With a K. <laughs> With a K. Okay. I think, I think oh, it's an acronym for I do. Knight, Leprechaun, Astronaut, Wizard. <laughs> kind of like Wasp. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least that was that's the in, in joke for them. Um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, I was just recently in Mad Magazine uh, in the last October issue. Right on. October issue uh -huh. working with a comedian writer whose name I'm spacing, but I'll bring up later. Um, yeah, that's right. And, we'll, we'll throw it in the. Yeah, yeah we'll check it in the. It's a credit. Casper slash uh, Lovecraftian Cthulhu thing. One page. Comic, Perfect. So. Right on. Yeah. That sounds so. right up your alley, too. Um, yeah. yeah, and I do a lot of stuff with the Lovecraftian horror conventions, uh, film festivals, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I do the art. Do you know Willem Pugmire? I do know Le Willem Pugmire. Okay, he very lives right. near me, actually. <laughs> All right, very good. <laughs> yeah. This is the original Seattle via yeah. HP Lovecrafty. Lovecrafty. Oh, really? Guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. He's the Eldritch Queen of Horror, as he <clears throat> calls sweet, himself. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, Excellent. He would be a fun person for the show. Anyway. Yeah, we should put him um, on. Oh. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> He's a character? Uh, um, not in the sense of somebody being a character, no. Oh. He's, a, he's, he's a very strong individual. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, and then it's in, uh, as a great segue, we have here Blaine Cook. Yes. Uh, as we know, Blaine is the uh, lead vocalist, 
the, the vocalist of uh, The Accused AD, but he's also had an illustrious career in the Seattle music scene since the 80s. Uh, in bands uh, from the farts. I think you were in 10 second warning for 10 minute warning. 10, 10 minute. minute warning. It's supposed to be a longer warning. Really yeah. Yeah. That's a little bit longer than 10 seconds. <laughs> for, well, no, I guess for 10 seconds. Uh, no, so you were in uh, 10 minute warning, of right. course, The Accused, yeah. uh, Toad Tag, and The Accused AD. Yeah, a few other things. but And yeah. a few other things yeah. as well. Yeah. And uh, so if you can uh, uh, sort of fill us in in. <laughs> <laughs> Start from the beginning. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I know that you are, you, and you can talk a little bit. I know you've been working on it. I've done all. Album. I've done all kinds of different stuff. So, you know, not only, but yeah. No, but I mean, if you talk about right now, what's happening in 2019? Yeah, I'm doing the Accused AD, and we have a new LP coming out. We're doing a comic book. I'll oh, drop sweet. Nick a line. Oh, right on. on. <laughs> nice. Doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because with the uh, di digital printing medium, the the price of uh, printing stuff is like gone. It's gone way, way down. Yeah, so. print on demand is, is cheap and good. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah we're doing a comic camp. Yeah, we're d doing a record. We're doing these videos. Are you guys touring more? I know you were touring We do, We while. do these weekend, uh, we do, kind of do these fly-ins. Mm -hmm. You know, because we just do it for fun, so we're not making any money. But, yeah, we're doing playing Vegas. Like I told you guys earlier on, playing Vegas next weekend. We did uh, five shows in Texas. Like a month or so back, yeah, we flew in and did a at Atlanta, some metal fest out there. Oh, Space. right on! Yeah, we're doing a big metal fest in uh, Baltimore in May. Oh, sweet! Nice. Wow, yeah. that sounds cool. Now, yeah. and I had asked this earlier, um, if you could sum up Splatter Rock in ten seconds, how? Would you well, describe Splatter it? Rock is more of, is just putting all your influences to get together to make the music because what we do doesn't like necessarily fit like. Some bands have a, a, a track, like some artists have, you know, you can tell there's artists that are very, very versatile, and then there's, there's people that just have a very specific style. What we do is it's more, not that we're, ver we, you know, we, we, can, we can do whatever we want. So it's <clears> like a mashup. It's like say. a mashup, right. yeah. Because yeah. we, we all like, we all like different stuff, and you know. That well, was more than 10 seconds, Blaine, is he in mm -hmm. trouble? Uh, well, she could ask other I, questions. I interrupted. Julie, Julie <laughs> asked other questions that you know kind yeah, of superseded the, the first question. So, exactly. You know. So, um, yeah, and as you guys know, the whole premise of this show is 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 kind of like, what do artists, musicians, creative people, what do we really talk about after a show, after a convention, mm -hmm. when you're all sort of beating back to the the hotel bar? and just decompressing. Yes. Because um, most podcasts we talk about, like, oh, tell us about your, how did you come together to, yes. and, and tell us the history of what this. What are your influences? The, yes, you know. You start, <laughs> exactly. I was like, who cares? We want to know, like, what do you guys really talk yeah, about? Yeah, what do you guys talk about? Um, <clears throat> so, you know, so it's like everything's, well, I think what we said, everything but religion and politics. And, politics, yeah. <laughs> and I know everybody this evening needs a break on politics, so. Yep. Uh, um, so, you know. Now, Blaine, you're going to have a show coming up in Vegas next week, correct? Yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Now, have you We're, played? When's the last time you played in Vegas? Mm -hmm. I've never played You've Vegas. You've never played there before? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. No, we're flying in. Our flight gets in around 4 o'clock. We have somebody, there, this other band, they're called Pap Smear. <clears throat> they're an old, an old Vegas, old Vegas metal band. Yeah, they're picking us up. The dude, he's got a car, and his girlfriend's got a hers. Awesome. Just so you know, because we're obviously, like I said, we're not making any money. So if we can, <laughs> if we can save the fifty or seventy-five dollar transfers from the yeah, uh, right, exactly, right on. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's one show. You're just playing one show, and then one show. That's do you guys? Are, are you headlining on that one, or yeah. are you? Oh, yeah. sweet. right on. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Now, after a show in Vegas, hypothetically, right. mm -hmm. what would you guys do? I mean, I, I, you could say, I, please don't say we're going to go home and go back to bed. Right? <laughs> yeah, we probably are. <laughs> no, but more like, what, is, what, what, are, what are we going to talk about, about, about for us? After the show, we're going to talk about how the sound was, how the set went. Ow. Sorry, Mickey, you fucked up some of the songs. <laughs> but, I mean, that's only because, you know, we've, Already you know, we've been playing... Out. <clears throat> for for t t together for so long, you know. Our you drummer, guys have our known for ages. Like you guys, yeah. Have you know, our drummer's our drummer's a new guy. I mean, that's that's what we talk about. And what are we going to do afterwards? 
yeah, we're going to probably go back to the hotel and go to sleep. You're not even going to gamble? What? No. I'm, I'm, not gonna throw, I'm not going to throw. I'm not going to throw. If I'm going to gamble, I might as well go to a strip, money a strip club because it's like the same thing. You're, you're giving your money away for something that's not going to that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> They're already gambling by going down there and playing, yeah. Julie. Not winning either way. No, somebody will probably will, somebody will have probably have some weed for us, and I don't know. We're going to maybe. You know the the club and the hotel they're pretty close. I don't. Yeah, you know, there's a. We'll actually, probably have a couple of, but you know, then we we're leaving the next day, so we have to get up and make sure we're ready to, you know, go to that. What what club is it? It's called you know? uh, Backstage Billiards. It's at uh, 600 Fremont Street, and we're staying at the Four Queens, which is on 400. It's right there Fremont on the strip. Street, or yep. you know, some something like that. You know? It's been probably. F- 12 or 13 years since I've been to Vegas. I, well, you'd I don't be even disappointed. know what's going I, I uh, The Fremont is, I was just there last week. Yeah. Um, and uh, so sad. Uh, well, of course, the Golden Goose is gone. So, no old strippers. Uh, no more Elvises. There's no Elvises walking around. What? I was really bummed out. Because, you know, back in the old day, there's always we used, five or six of them. We actually down. used to go to uh, Rail, my wife, and, and uh, our daughter. We used to go to Vegas all the time. When, our, when, when she was younger, because it was for a while they were trying to make Vegas family friendly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. You know, and you'd, you'd go there. And it was, God, it was cheap. You could get a, we'd stay at the uh, casino called the Frontier. Oh, yeah. Right. You'd, yeah. you'd, you'd yeah. get, a, you'd get a, 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 a suite, which was like, you know, a room and a separate room. God, it was like 45 or $65. Yeah. Yeah. You know? You yeah. can get a steak for three bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, now you go, I mean, even those, those rooms down in the Fremont Street, shit, the Four Queens, it's like 250 bucks, you know? Yeah, or you used not. to stay at the Circus Circus, you'd get a room for, yeah. Like 60 bucks. Next to nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. next to nothing. Yeah. Not anymore. Oh, that's crazy. So that's the way it is everywhere. It's not just the way <laughs> yeah. in Vegas, but. Yeah. yeah, the Circus Circus, the cat show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. The cat yeah. show? Yeah, they yeah, have, they like, had they a, have cat like a circus show. performance, and mm-hmm. at some point, there's yeah. a cat show. There's a cat show. And they have show. cats doing circus stuff, which is kind of amazing. I didn't know anything about yes. that. Oh, the circus, yeah, the dude, the, yeah, they, and then he got, had the guy out there, he, he's playing the drums. And they'd come out, yeah. Keeping the timing on the, yeah. on the, yeah. yeah the the circus circus is awesome. <laughs> I love that place. I, what, that, wasn't that a... The the place that Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas wasn't wasn't that where they were staying? Was it Circus Circus? Oh, in the book or the movie? In the or? movie. Oh, okay, I, I can't remember Wouldn't which one it was. The place I had some crazy was. carpet and wallpaper action going. That on. Was yeah, it's, awesome. a, it's a wacky joint. Yeah. So. I always like Caesar's Palace was my favorite. Really? I just love walking through there, and I and they have you know they it's have like that the statue Greek of David and... there you know that like a replica. It was, yeah, I thought that was really cool. I like Caesar's Palace. Yeah, I went to their buffet because I, I, they used to have the greatest buffet, right? And they still have an amazing yeah. buffet, but ba- last time I was there, the buffet was buffet prices, you know? And uh, this yeah, 40, time around, $45. Yeah, $45 for a head. No, and now it's more like uh, we for two people, it was almost $200. What? For the buffet. We went to the dinner. It's highway robbery. And, That's absurd. Uh, I, I was like, but it was really good. But it, I, good. it wasn't two hundred dollars good. <laughs> no, it actually was pretty good. Uh, I, I we put it on the the company card, you know, and went in and ate there. And that's I've never eaten elk before, and oh. so I got to have oh, wow. an elk slider. That's yummy. So that was, it was not a two hundred dollar elk slider though. Do you yeah. do you like gamey meats like? Like deer elk and, and venison and, and yeah. stuff like that. I don't really know because I don't I don't really eat go places where they have any i've had a buffalo burger before but i've never had anything like that's it. my fave it's really good one of the only reasons i still go to whole foods is because they have ground buffalo really yeah it's great it makes spaghetti sauce with it oh, it's wonderful now that's actually as a great segue into uh the place you <laughs> own which is zippy's yeah. giant hamburgers zippy's giant hamburgers. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Best in, burgers in Seattle. Seriously, <laughs> uh, up in White Center. Um, do you guys have a? I don't recall you guys having anything like a gamey. Hamburger. We do. We do not. No, we don't do anything like that. But I do know that you do. You do something special with your hamburgers. I remember you say something about. Someone said you hand ground it. Yeah, we 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 hand ground it up until about a year ago. But you know, um, with, uh, the price of labor in Seattle. I mean, what what we do when we first opened. We had like a uh, 12, 12 stools, a very, very small place, right. and you could you could afford to do that. But when, it, when you get bigger, I mean, that I mean, even like slicing an onion, you know, can you pay somebody fifteen dollars, and that's what they're gonna do? 
is they're going to cut up an onion. So before you know it, you have this onion that costs you 59 cents, you know, it ends up being $3 a, a pound. So you have to, it's, you, you know, for, for what we do, we can't raise the prices up to like what they charge here in, in Georgetown or somewhere. Right. Yeah. If I could charge $15 for a hamburger and a side of tater tots. I can for delivery, but I can't in the restaurant. Right, yeah, I got right. You. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You know, so how long have you been open there in the, what's it, White Center or what's the White, White, uh, White Center. White Center, but, uh, we're 11 years old now. Oh, okay. Yeah. And this is the one, because I remember when you guys had that little tiny Yeah, in, in Highland Park mm -hmm. is where yeah. we started. Um, and we've got the that. spot in White Center. It's a great location, so. No, it's, it's tough, you know, people running a business like that where you have to not only I don't so much now. I play the owner role. You know, I have a, you know, a fellow that, you know, Jesse Burns. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> yes. is, you know, my, my manager that handles all of the stuff that I can't do because I don't have the personality and temperament to, to deal with that kind of to, stuff. To deal with that, you know. Yeah. Now, do you actually come in? You used to. I remember in the old days, you actually would be there yeah, cooking the burgers. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't. You're not there anymore? I don't work there anymore. Ah. Mm. No. Do you I, have, I, like, I do. a blank cook day where you... <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I you sneak in with star yeah. sunglasses and somebody else who you are. No, I, <laughs> I, I, no I, I do. Yeah, I do the shopping and you know some administrative stuff. But yeah, I don't work in the kitchen anymore. So, are you doing more? Uh, uh, would you say in the last year, particularly, are you doing a lot more with the band? Um, mm -hmm. It's better for my mental health. Yeah. <laughs> are you guys writing new things and constantly writing new stuff? Doing the old favorites, both. Uh, a little of both, you know, because we we play the uh, songs by our, the band that we were in, the accused, and then we have the this toe tag material, which is like, right. you know, ten ten years worth of uh, worth of stuff, and we have a new drummer. You know, you can only learn to play so many songs, because you're going to play them live. You have to do it confidently. You can't yeah. Just and I know you guys have been working on that new album. Uh, you have Jack, Jack and Dino. Yeah. He's been uh, he's producing it, correct? Or is I mean, he, he, he does it all. When you go, yeah. when we work with Jackie, he produces engineers and everything. And what's the? Uh, is, can you tell us the release date for that? Uh, yeah. we're, we're doing. We're, we're doing a. a uh, we're we have it on. We're putting it out on two labels. One of them is a label that's called Dread Dread Records, and they do mostly uh, cassette oh, cool. releases. Because believe it or not, people actually do buy cassettes. So he's doing a cassette release. And that release has different artwork, and it's a different uh, different mix, and it's not mastered. And then the uh, the official release is on uh, Black House Records, and this guy actually really does more uh, rap. Hmm. Is this local? Uh, the uh, no, no. The the yeah, the Black House Records guy. He's about the closest. Mm -hmm. He's in like a Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Dread Records guy. I mean, you do all this shit on the internet. I mean, you know, I don't. <laughs> It doesn't really matter where people are. It could be, you right. know, we could, yeah, yeah, exactly. could be talking to Nick yeah. right now and he's in Brazil. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, it doesn't, because yeah. you, don't, you don't even need it. Well, you recorded even. it all in San Francisco, correct? No, here in oh, Seattle. Oh, you did? It's, oh, okay. It's Soundhouse. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Sound, okay. Uh, Soundhouse Studios, which was uh, original, it's, it is the only studio in Seattle that was built from the ground up to be a recording studio. And really? it was built by uh, Scott Crane, who was Bob Crane's son. Oh, Scotty Crane, yeah, he used Scotty to have a Crane. show on the on the radio. Here. Bob Crane was from Hogan's Heroes, yes. oh, well, and he yeah. was he, he was, was murdered murdered, yeah. murdered yeah, about right. uh, uh, camp, like seventy nine. Okay, he was doing a very originator was he of a, a lot of heavy. Yeah. He was into a lot of uh, uh, dark uh, VHS, yeah. VHS yeah. VHS porn. Po yeah, VHS or, or, or okay. v -T VTR videotape recorder, whatever you know before. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. What was the movie they made about it? I saw that in the theater. About and, the Hogan's uh, Heroes. Yeah, yeah the, about murder? Bob Crane's murder. Yeah. yeah. They made a tele. They made the television. They made a movie about oh, it. Was good. But I can't remember the name of the movie. Apparently, Scotty Crane hated it because he was bashing him when he was on oh. the radio. He's like, oh, he was super pissed. But um, I'd like to. I'd like to sit down and talk to Scotty Crane. Yeah, he lives down in the in the. Yeah, Southern California now. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, he, he used does. to have a radio show here. Yes. Yeah. But that was that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Interesting. Was along. So is. Focus. Autofocus. Hmm? Auto <laughs> oh, autofocus. That's okay. right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Dan. That autofocus. That wasn't even the movie. I saw it in the theater. I thought it was pretty yeah. cool. Now, actually, uh, movies like that actually brought up. I was remembering for some weird reason. I, I maybe because I was thinking of you. I might have been channeling you guys, and we could talk about. 
weird movies. I know you're a big movie buff. I know you're also <laughs> a movie buff. Uh, but I suddenly had a flashback to a movie that my parents, for some reason, let me watch. And I think it's because we used to go to the drive-in uh, back in the day when people were too cheap to get babysitters, so they'd throw the kid in the back and go to a drive-in movie. And I, that messed me up so bad. They always pick the weirdest movies, but I remember the movie Bad Ronald. I don't know if you guys remember that movie. It came Bad out in 74. No. It had Dabney Coleman in it. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was about this kid who murders somebody and his mom decides to create basically a safe room in her house or he's living inside the walls, <laughs> right? It's to hide him from the cops. Well, she has a heart attack or something and dies, right? And they sell the house and he's still living in the walls. And this new <laughs> family, Dabney Coleman and his family move in and he falls in love with the, bad Ronald falls in love with one of the daughters, you know, and he's like, He's creepy, and uh, and then he so you watched this movie when you were how old? Four. That explains a whole bunch yeah. of stuff, <laughs> right? Just, right now, I just okay. So anyway, I just had that flashback to this movie, and uh, like the weirdest movies in the seventies. Like, my parents had me uh, in the back seat, like Poseidon Adventure. I saw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. on television. They had hoped I slept through that. I woke up when the whole uh, the whole ship turned upside down, and everybody fell from the floor to the ceiling. So you had no context, you're just like, what? Like, hey, yeah, I just going wake on up here? and that's just, and I had nightmares, I guess. <laughs> uh, I saw, uh, I saw Empire of the Ants, I saw oh, yeah. Food for the Gods, I saw all kinds of oh, crazy yeah. stuff in the, in the yeah, theater. In the, well, this was in the drive-in, because they yeah. were, well, same. same thing, yeah. yeah. Well, well I'm much, much larger in the drive-in. What, what was the first horror movie you saw, that you remember? <sighs> um... Uh, La Last Man on Earth. Oh, nice. With, with Vincent Price. Price. Yeah. I saw that in the, in the theater. Um, I saw a... Uh, when I was younger, my parents were divorced, and I had to live with my dad, and, and uh, on Saturdays and Sundays, they would just... That was our babysitter, the movie theater. Yeah, right. They would throw us at the movie theater, and uh, Friday nights, you know, I... You know, some Planet of the Apes marathon. I saw yep, Beatles I, movies. I did that too. Yeah. Uh, cool. mar marathon. I saw Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Um, uh, uh, Zero Mostrel. What's that one? What Fiddler on the Roof? Fiddler on the Roof. Yeah. I saw that. Saw that when I was a little kid. Yeah, but definitely um, Last Man on Earth. I saw that in the theater, and that was. Uh, did that screw you up? Hardcore when you were a kid. Yeah, it's pretty hardcore, hard, hardcore now. And I remember yeah. um, the first time that I didn't see like Night of the Living Dead until like I was in high school because some of those those cult things they weren't, weren't really as exactly. accessible right. oh, as, yeah. as, as stuff yeah, is now, okay. you know. Yeah. And I remember right. the, I, I was kind of like scared to see that for the first time, you know, because you know. Or I remember when The Exorcist came out, I was I was about to old. ask you, but I saw I saw that? the Omen. Right. I saw the Omen yeah. Omen in the theater. Well, that was like P PG. It was. Yeah. And God, you watch that now. Even it's though it like, had like a beheading scene in the it. The behead. I was. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Like how they get away the with that. The beheading scene or the 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 the, the, uh, the, the spike or whatever the, Yeah. On the yeah. Falling First the horror movie I saw. I think I was about five or six, and I saw House of Wax. Oh, nice. Another yeah, at my at my cousin's house, and that scared the hell out of me. Yeah, yes. and I, I saw, saw Blood of the Vampire. I think it was with well, Christopher wait. Lee. I saw House of Wax in 3D at the uh, Town Theater on Fourth uh, or Fifth and Pike, and I was so high. On it. They made so, 3D. I was so high on acid. <laughs> Oh, that's yes, funny. we were taking the bus back out to West Seattle. It's like, oh, oh well, this could be the so next segue. Everyone's segment. melting. I've yeah. never, been, never been so high. I could always bring up, like, what have people seen on acid? But before we get to that, what have you seen as a Oh, maybe it wasn't oh, 3D. You? I think well, the yeah. first horror film I saw in a theater was Legend of Hell, of Hell House with Roddy McDowell mm. based on oh. Richard Matheson's right. book. Mm -hmm. And yeah. in Alaska, the theaters were not kept up well there was rats running around and i remember so it was like that feel of vision where you yeah because some because one bumped into my leg and i remember just like pulling my legs up and kids were in the there's like the balcony area when theater's a little fancier and they were throwing those like uh sweet tarts oh. and like pegging people down in uh, front right. so like you're trying to watch this movie you got rats hitting your legs and getting beamed and it was, it was, quite, by it was sweet quite the experience yeah my brothers wow. took me and i was like holy shit now did you guys ever actually go to drink <laughs> I know we don't basket do drugs, case. right? You saw basket well, back, case? When you were talking about throwing candy, when that was the thing, yeah. well, on, you'd see a movie on a Friday night. I mean, that's, it was a bunch of fucking kids there. 
Yeah. And it was rowdy people yeah. standing yeah. up. They're right. yelling shit. They're fucking yeah. throwing, Talking throwing shit around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you guys didn't see movies on drugs. That didn't affect you. No. no. Just one. I gotta go take it. I gotta take it this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry for driving in the van. <laughs> Blaine will be right back. <laughs> Live. Isn't this fun? <laughs> okay. No. Uh, don't worry, Blaine. We're gonna keep talking. So yeah. Yeah. So I, I. Well, I'll just spill the beans. I remember uh, I dropped acid. I've, I've seen several movies on acid. Uh, I saw there was a movie about. Explain some more stuff. About somebody had cancer. Uh, that I saw on acid. Cancer. I don't remember what happened. Uh, and then I saw The Princess Bride. Okay. On on acid. I saw it in the theater. I saw it in the theater on acid. And I, uh, unfortunately, what happened was in the middle of the movie, I had to go to the bathroom, and I went back into the bathroom, and I got lost in there. Lost in the bathroom? I got lost in the bathroom. Jesus. What's a bathroom? 20 by 15 feet, and you got lost in it, there? It had checkers in it, like tiles oh, of so checkers. So they're moving so and I, talking I, to I you? I got lost in there. And, and oh, I, no, yeah. I saw ordinary people on acid. Why, what? Why would you? <laughs> I don't know. Super well, on acid, then they're unordinary people. A very people. depressing, yeah. yeah. Or very like depressing very, movie like, on acid. I laughed films. inappropriately throughout the movie. Oh, okay. And I'll then uh, the worst thing that I, my big, my worst choice in movies to go see on acid. Mm-hmm. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, oh yeah. Not on that. That was. So you that don't. Was pretty quick, Blaine. You're like a speed wizard. I know. I don't know. That seemed like a pretty <laughs> good one to me. <laughs> So anyway, yes, I did see the Ch- Texas Chainsaw Massacre on four hits of acid. I would not recommend doing that. I saw my first viewing of Texas Chainsaw was on mushrooms in an abandoned building, and I thought it was a documentary, and I was freaking out. <laughs> it is. And Remember that, they said this is based on a true yeah, story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They kind of have that at the setup at the beginning of that movie. And it, it led me down the path of reading lots of things I about Ed Gein. This can explain a lot about where you wound up in your yeah. career. <laughs> yeah, I've seen your artwork, possibly. Nick. It's uh, it's out there. It's crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Although he and I actually, Nick and I had talked at one point about doing a children's book because uh, yeah, no, I <laughs> yeah, love doing perfect children's for it. books. No, no that'd I'm be seriously. Super fun. He uh, he did this really great picture of a rabbit, uh, a painting of a rabbit, and it reminded me of the uh, an old series that they did called Billy Whiskers back in the early 20th century. That was the goat, right? It was yeah. Yeah. Mm. And uh, his stuff was. I was like, we've got to do a book someday. It was it was. This stuff's great, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so you, uh, I'm sure you don't do these things anymore, right? What's that? Mushrooms. No, I never. I haven't in a have while. <laughs> I wouldn't movie. pass it up. I couldn't. I could not imagine paying good movie m- money. You know how it costs like twenty something dollars now to go see a movie. Uh, I, know, I don't think. About I, it. I don't know. Like sometimes when they do like a David Lynch double feature, it's fun to imbibe. Really? For those, yeah, because the films start to like but it's a overlap. Feature. The film makes right. sense then, and it feels like it's never going to end, and you're just like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> so you feel like you get your money's worth and everything. Yeah. So. I think the last time I saw some David Lynch films in the theater it was like Eraserhead and Lost Highway, I've and I thought they were both related and both made complete sense. And then went back to my friend's place and listened to like Diamante Gloss for like two hours. <laughs> oh, I saw a Clockwork Orange on acid too. Oh, that was another of course. one. Of course, yeah, another one. Mm-hmm. So, of course, whenever you see these things on acid, then you have to go see it again. Yes. <laughs> Did that really happen? Exactly. Um, no. Yeah. Oh, we're getting low here. Um, Nemo, banana bread. That's the code word for more beer. Oh. Ah. Yes. So now you know Now you know the secret password. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So, um, Nick, why don't you tell us what you're working on, it, on now? What Any special on? projects? I just did a painting so you this did, last You did the Mad Magazine thing. I did do the Mad Magazine okay. thing. And that was super fun. And I, I remember even, seeing that posted in Facebook. And that was so very cool. Well, yeah. I, I've got them here. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. He brought, oh, you he brought, brought, yeah, brought Show and tell. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. cool. Great. <laughs> I brought three. One for everyone. <gasps> oh, that's so cool. So, you are so thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, this is great. I was yeah. just, we'll just and show that's, everybody. And that's Gary... Horror artist Gary Poland did the cover. Yeah, that's Dude, this is cool. So cool. And let's see, let me see if I can get to the page quickly here for Cathasper, the friendly elder god. You do a lot with um, with HP Lovecraft. Oh, here we go. Yeah, you yeah. do quite a bit of uh, Lovecraftian stuff. Let's show everybody. 
We'll probably, we'll have a, a, a screenshot of this. Right on. And I was given a surprising amount of liberties. Like, I was like, can I put Richie Rich in there? Because I really wanted to, like, fuck with Richie Rich. And so I got to have him pulling his eyes out. And, um, they're of like, course. Yeah, no, they are like, yeah, this is great. Yeah, do that. And they were really fun to work with. Um, Susie Splab, who's the art director there and art editor. Mm -hmm. um, I'd met her a couple of times at Monster Palooza down in Pasadena and Burbank. Okay. She's from Seattle. Oh, okay. Um, she's from punk scene here. And she, uh, yeah, she was looking at my work at my booth and was like, I have a project that you might be a good fit for. And then, uh, so yeah, back and forth with her was great. They did a, a lot of hands on as far as like the layout was all ready. I just had to kind of fill in the blanks. It was really, and they're like, you know, you can color it if you want to. And I was like, yeah, actually, I really cool. want to do that. So uh, went with that process. And then I was getting liner notes on how to draw the, the kind of the Harvey comic style heads because they're like light bulb shaped kind of. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just weird getting used to drawing that style. And I was getting like red line corrections from someone at their offices. And I was like, who's doing Who's giving me these <laughs> tips? And they're like, oh, I'm terrible because I can't remember the guy's name. But he used to illustrate Casper for Harvey Comics. Oh, and I was really? Like, what? Oh, wow. So, that's awesome. Pretty awesome. Straight getting, from the source. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I was that's pretty, really pretty cool. Psyched on that. So I've got the got the red lines at home. <laughs> yeah, it so, looks fantastic. No, this looks great. Yeah, this is this is really cool. Are you going to be doing more work with them? Do you know? Uh, I, I don't know. No, it was just a one-time so. thing at the moment. I was going to ask you. I had a question for you. Um, did you ever do any illustrations of Robert E. Howard? type Cthulhu creepy stuff. You know, Robert the guy who wrote, H yeah, who wrote Conan? Conan? Yeah. yeah. Why do you say Robert E. Howard type stuff? You mean uh, like more like sword and sandals no, type no, thing? No, his, his, he wrote a bunch oh, of horror he did, stuff. Yeah, like the, yeah. The, the, the worm cycle, like his book of the, what's his, uh, Vermis Mysteries of the, the Worm or something like that. Did that he, was one of the books that he created. So yeah. in the world of, you know, in Lovecraft's world, there was all these writers that were writing to each yeah. other and they called it the Lovecraft Circle. And mm -hmm. so it was like, Robert E. Howard and um, there was two or three other guys too there was a lot of guys uh, and they would share characters mm -hmm. and things and so the book that Robert E. Howard created would show up in a lot of Lovecraft's works along with the Necronomicon and a gotcha. bunch of other things yes. and then, like Frank Belknap long created like, these creatures the hounds of Tindalos that would come through strange angles in rooms and that got incorporated into Lovecraftian stuff and so that everyone was influencing each other and overlapping. It was it, a lot of creative, interesting, weird stuff was going on, and uh, it's great to pull imagery sources from. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Because I just listened to like two or three Robert E. Howard horror um, things online. Someone was reading them. So I just went on YouTube and I typed it in, and that's the great thing about technology today. About right. YouTube. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. You type it in, and there you go. It's yeah, awesome. yeah. If you're familiar, and I listened to about stuff. three different uh, three different horror stories by him, and I forgot how. I had never read them before, and uh, so they're really cool. And I thought, ah, oh, Nick is gonna like this stuff. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. It's fun finding like authors who write in one genre and find out that they wrote other stuff, like horror stuff. Like, um, who's the dude that wrote Sherlock uh, Holmes? Doyle. Uh, Doyle. Yeah. Arthur Conan Doyle yeah, Arthur wrote Conan a bunch Doyle. of ghost yeah. stories. There's one that's there's oh, kind of a famous that. ghost story. Mm -hmm. A book that there we go. Wrote. Oh, Robert. There we go. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Frank Ben Long. Okay, I've heard Robert of all those Howard. guys. August Erlith. August Erlith was the Frank the, Long. Uh, yeah. Publisher August of Darryl, Arkham House. Darryl. Ashton Smith. So, yes. Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Dan, Dan does many things yes. off stage that yes. you can't see. Our tech yes. guy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, do you guys do? I, I uh, actually, you guys <coughs> put out. Two. I, I thought you guys just put out two new videos. I know you did just put out Hate Your Friends. We did. Which is awesome. And did. I actually, I was showing it to, uh, I sent it over to Dan um, to look at. And I was like, you know, I was watching this and I'm like, that room looks really familiar. Um, and I was the same. It's in your, in, it's in your basement. Yeah, I recognize that's where you, that. You, that's your, where you your band. And I actually was able to. For my wife's surprise birthday party. Yeah. Which she, it before, but <laughs> oh, the party. That's that's why it was a surprise. <laughs> right, exactly. No, and I actually I was like, hey, it's a great video, so we're actually gonna post yeah. it on the on the site or on our YouTube uh, site here. But uh, uh, yeah, and I actually dug up that one photo that somebody took of Rot 13 playing playing in there. Yeah, in there. Was awesome. And I I love I think my favorite part watching your video 
and I watch the outtakes, the bloopers. They're oh, funny. those, are, yeah. those yeah. are funny. Those yeah. are really funny. Uh, was trying to see how your room has changed over the years, you know, like what's on the <laughs> walls and everything, like all the different uh, posters. He's got a lot of, he's a big uh, collectible. Uh, like got, flyers and stuff? Oh, or? my God, yes. Uh, what, whatever. He's I got go everything. through. I go through phases. I get some stuff, then I get rid of it and get something. You know. Yeah, mm. he's got a lot of stuff. And what it's are you fun. collecting these days? I don't really collect anything these days because it's a, you know, drink tab. No. <laughs> no, you don't. I watch you drink that beer. It's no, you know, no. My money goes right now because I the foot the stuff that the band does. But if I collect anything, I I, uh, I uh, get toy guns. Mm. If I if I was to buy anything, I you know, <clears throat> in the original in, in the original packaging, you know, something you know right. from, from the from the nineteen sixties, you know, yeah, you science fiction type toy guns or like all kinds. Um, of I like spy 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 kind of stuff. Okay. So I, I've got the uh, um, uh, there was a toy line called uh, uh, Agent Zero M. Um, which mm. is like a, a camera that turned into a gun, or a pocket knife that turned into a gun, or they had a uh, like an uh, eight millimeter uh, camera that turned it turned into a gun, and they have, they have a bazooka. And a they got a bazooka. Gun. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. That's awesome. The Sonic Blaster. He took off the market because kids were it was blowing out kids' ears, you know. <laughs> <laughs> of course That's they hilarious. did. Um, Who tests these things? That's what I want to know. Oh, back, then, they know back, then, back then they didn't. That's why there was yeah. toy guns back then shot plastic projectiles and there was caps with gunpowder. And It was all of that. You oh, just yeah. were a smart kid. You either were smart or not. Yeah. Well, it's just, whatever. Yeah. Or you're just having know. fun. Right. <laughs> yeah. We used to have BB gun fights up in the woods behind my house. Oh, yeah. It and was, we weren't wearing, like, protective gear. We were just, right. like, trying to get the high ground. Yeah. And there was, like, this weird... Uh, cabin that wasn't finished that was built with just trees from around the area and it was completely unfinished and we would that would be kind of like where you'd want to seek out and everything was covered in moss because where i grew up it was like a rainforest in alaska and so it was like the ground was soft so you could jump really far and land terribly and still be okay right. for the most part unless it was like a rock hiding but yeah we would just yeah we, we were not taking any safety shots it well, was, that was this way. 60s shots. and 70s you just yeah. 50s 60s and 70s you just you know. Your parents are like, here, here's a bicycle. Go out. When the sun comes down, you come back home because the dinner's yeah. going to be. Yeah. yeah. That was it. That's how we were. Yeah. Well, common sense. And that's yeah, that's like when they handed people, the... Yeah, people are scared. <clears throat> parents are scared of what their kids are out, are out there doing, and it's not any more dangerous now than it you, was. I mean, if you come yeah. from, like, an Irish Catholic family on my, uh, on my side of the family, you know, they just, they're like, well, we'll just make more. You know, if... if, if, if <laughs> <laughs> One of our kids is gone. Hey, we've, we've, we we have we have a creek that runs in a green belt behind our house, and we'd let our kid she'd be out there fucking playing in that creek by herself for hours. Like, well, oh, yeah. she, she's not. Well, kid, she's a smart kid, kid, kid though. Well, some people think kids are fucking stupid. You know, it's like you have a fireplace at your house. You don't. I mean, if your kid's gonna be stupid enough, I mean. You know, natural selection. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, most kids, you'd be given, given them the, the choice, they are smart enough to know. Yeah. Right. And if you did something stupid, you'd get in trouble anyway. Like, if yeah. I did something stupid, they weren't going to sue anybody. They, I would get in trouble. I was like, well, that it's was a good, It's a great way to learn shit. Yeah. That's like, how, how to do think? shit and how not to do shit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. People dummy-proof their houses. You can't even use it yourself. It's... Kind of crazy. I, mean, yeah. exactly. I see kids today on a bicycle. They're, they're wearing like a plastic suit of armor or something. When they, I'm like, Ugh. And they're not cosplaying. No, no. It's no. like, a, yeah, here's, a, here's some shoulder pads, some knees, or elbows, and a helmet, and a face mask. And a, now you can ride your bicycle. And the bicycle is actually a bubble that you get inside. Yeah, exactly. So you can't it's, actually it's touch anything. bulletproof glass. It's virtual. It. <laughs> it's not even real. Yeah. Giant so. hamster ball. <laughs> I know we've already all sound like old people, but it really is. I mean, that's like a... When my, we are old, Julie. I know. We just look beyond. No, my husband just bought my nephew. A, uh, my nephew wanted a skateboard, and he's just turned four. And it is a little young for a skateboard, so we got him a Razor, you know, a scooter. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and of course, everybody's asking, well, of course, he's going to have a helmet, right? You know, and I'm like, he's not my kid. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> he's my sister's kid, whatever. <laughs> Uh, when kids are that old, they, they're made out of rubber. They just bounce short. off. They, they, yeah. they're, they don't have far to go when they go down, right? Their skulls are still soft and malleable, exactly. right? Well, that's you what happened to me. 
I'll just shape them <laughs> back know together. That, right? yeah, you fill out a window. I fill out a window. <laughs> fill that out explains a, some other stuff, Julie. We're learning head. a lot of things here. I know. I fell 27 feet, land on my what? head. As a oh, seen horror baby. movies when you were a yeah. kid, on drugs, seeing them. Now was, you fell out of a window on your head. Yeah, I, was, I crawled out. I'm, I was leaning on a, a screen, window screen, as a kid. And I was second floor, uh, second story, and it popped out. And, they landed on my head, rolled down the hill. They were like, yeah. well, nothing looks broken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Walk it off. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Exactly. <laughs> I was dropped on my head as a yeah, kid. Put a and then I got to neck. meet the guy that dropped me on my head, which my folks used to have these rager parties. And, like, <laughs> this he guy came up. This, this, yeah, there was a bunch of people over at our house, and I guess they were passing the baby or whatever, and I got dropped on my head. And, and <laughs> year, years later, we're having dinner, and they invite some guy over, and we're hanging out. My mom's like, oh, by the way, this is so-and-so. He dropped you on your head. I was like, you're the guy. <laughs> this guy was just laughing. Ah. Yeah, but if you weren't dropped on your head, you might not be able to draw Cthulhu monsters. Right. This is true. I might magazine. not be able to see into those dimensions. So yes. see. I'm grateful. Yes. <laughs> we are, too. Well, you didn't do any crazy stuff when you were a kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look at the face. <laughs> Did we get that one on camera? Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you mean? <laughs> What do you do? And like, you grew up in uh, on Alki, right? You grew up in West Seattle. My parents were were divorced, so I was between West Seattle, West Seattle. And, Van and Vancouver, Washington. Oh, yeah. okay. Mm. Yeah, I considered the the West Seattle. So where in West Seattle? Because my mom was was from West Seattle. My mom had a house on on Harbor Avenue. Okay. Right up there on on Alki, which was right across from yep. the Seacrest Marina. Okay. Yep. Just like a whole other. My mom lived down the street from God. What's uh, what's the name of the fish joint? There. Well, oh, there spuds. 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 Okay. Yeah, she was right down the street yeah. from Spuds. And then uh, what was the ice cream shop that was down the street from that? I can't remember. Anyway, that was her hangout when she was a kid. Yeah. So you probably did nothing wrong. You yeah, you. I did, I did a lot of bad stuff when I was younger. <clears throat> bad stuff or interesting stuff. Or both. Probably a little of, a little of both. Well, we'll wait for the book to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you're right. The, the tell-all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's never going to be a tell-all. Come on, Blaine. You can share one story. Maybe, maybe with just to tell just some. I know one, we got. Story. We got <coughs> one story about what what, 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 what what a kid yeah. like when I what, what what constitutes a kid like between uh, the ages of the eight to, to, to uh, under under ten. Under ten. Under ten? Oh, that'll yeah. be a PG one. No, it won't. Look at his face. <laughs> no, it's not going to be PG. It's going to be PG thirteen. Yeah, no. See? That's to get, to get into the true true confessions kind of thing. I will say that I was a. Pr Prolific shoplifter. Ooh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But did you get caught? I never got caught. See? Wow. Those are the best kind. Yeah. Yeah. One time they thought they caught us, but we knew that the guy was following us around. Hmm. We dumped the goods. You're on to him. You ditched it? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was in the fifth, fifth grade. Hmm. What kind of stuff were you snooping for? Uh, just anything, candy bars, um, just, just stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything. So you were bad did you ever boy. hit a point where you just stopped? Well, yeah, said, yeah, yeah. No, I never did. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no, I did. I got a no. candy bar right now. No, I think by the time I was thirteen, I, I realized no, I'm not. Yeah, no. I, yeah, you're not doing. Do that you remember the long. last thing that you, you shoplifted? Pilford. I remember the last thing that I wanted to, to. To steal, and that was in. Uh, uh, there was the Golden Age collectibles. <laughs> oh yeah, right. uh, Rod, uh, Rod Dyke, and he owned that. And then mm -hmm. Rita Dyke, his mom had the had the bookstore. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, yeah, I was in there. And it's like, man, I want to, I want to steal this. Uh, I want to grab this uh, paperback. That was later on. I was yeah, high high school, and I was like, no, I can't do that. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. You know, I actually had a moment like that in high school, too. The last thing I stole was a Cramps album. And of course you did. I stole, a, it was the one that the one that had the human fly on it. And I, I just didn't have enough. I stole it. And then I got home, and I just felt like such an asshole. I was like, I can't. I, I didn't give it back. I didn't bring it back. <laughs> you weren't that guilty. I wasn't that guilty. But I was like, that was the last thing I stole. I was like, I can't, I can't do this again. I felt awful. Huh. 
Yeah, yeah I never ripped anything off. You never yeah. stole anything? No, I I think I took I took some stuff when I was in kindergarten. I had a, this, these magnets, and I was stealing like little tacks and stuff. But I didn't know that was stealing. <laughs> And so my mom Innocent found them in my thief. pocket. She's like, "What are these?" I'm like, "Tax." And, you know, I just put them in. She goes, "You stole that stuff." I'm like, "I didn't. St- I don't know. I'm not, I don't steal, mom." She goes, "So she made. She wrote this thing in an envelope, and I had to give them back. And and I just hid it in a in a in a drawer. <laughs> you or something never mailed like it that. off. No, I I put it in the school, but oh. I didn't think of it as stealing when I was a kid. I yeah. thought, oh, this is just fun. I'm just tax and stuff up there. Whatever. And I'm sure you never. Yeah. And that was oh, it. Oh yeah, no, I got caught. Oh, you did yeah. get caught. You remember that there was like this, I don't know if there were See, if you don't get stores. caught, you become a musician. <laughs> if you do get caught, you become an yeah. artist. <laughs> I I technically, I see I was caught. Technically, I was caught, so I'm an artist. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was like, I think I took an action figure or something from the Benjamin Franklin, like a five and dime type place, and oh, got right. caught. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, my dad was a judge, so, like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was like, you're going to go back in there, and we're going to apologize to them. Yada yada. So, at least he didn't do the fake. We're gonna take you to jail. No. He never threatened you with prison. No. Oh. No. Thankfully. Not scared no. straight. No, no scared yeah. straight. No, but no, definitely, no. I definitely didn't had, take you to the I, joint and go here. <laughs> see these guys over here? They're waiting for a piece of meat like you, kid. No, there there was a point like when I got my first mohawk, and he was like, "Okay, we need to have a talk." <laughs> and because they kicked me out of school for it, which was bullshit. But for like, mohawk? yeah, because it was disrupting class. And so, and the teacher called my mom an ass, and like, well, not the teacher, the principal. Um, but then my dad was like, you realize what I do is a job. And I realize what you're doing is what you want to do, and I support what you want to do. But let's try to make However, it not become a thing where... I'm getting phone calls. <laughs> yeah, we're not fucking <laughs> yeah. with each other. Like, I don't need was, a telephone to ring at 2 talk. o'clock in the morning, no, kid. He wasn't like berating me. He was just like, I want you to be able to do your thing, but I also want you to know that like... I am. I have this job, and this is kind of how it looks to people. And you know, he, he rounded it out pretty nicely. And I was like, I get, I get it. That's that's respectful. And so, I tried. tried. <laughs> you made tried. some effort. Some. Well, on that note, I will, I hate to say it, but we uh, were run out of time. Yeah, so I worn wanna, out our welcome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I want to say thank you. We, we will be actually throwing your uh, both your guys' uh, websites up on our on our um, YouTube show. And um, but thank you guys. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Blaine. Yeah, thank you. Really you guys. This it. Really it. Fun. Yeah. We want to thank uh, Palace thank you Theater. For this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. It's awesome. Buy it. And of course, when uh, what's your album called? By the way, the one that's coming out. The Ghoul in the Mirror. The Ghoul in the Mirror. Excellent. Definitely Look check forward that out. to it. And uh, I want to thank again our uh, sponsor, The Stranger, uh, Palace, and all of you. Mm-hmm. So thanks so much. And we'll see you again. Uh, we're doing this every first Tuesday of the month. Uh, so we'll be here at the Palace next next March. Next March. March 5th, I think, I think it is, March isn't 5th. it? Yes. Yep, 8 o'clock. Okay. Uh, until then. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Did you guys get enough beer?